Guys, I would never normally jump ahead of the video, but I want to say that this report contains some very sensitive and upsetting content on the issue of transgender rights and violence. Just putting that out there at the top so you're prepared. Okay, let's dive in. One of the big issues that we have heard today and we've talked about lately is that, that without surgery, the risk of suicide goes way up. Well, I am one of those parents who lived with a daughter who was suicidal for three years. Someone once asked me, wouldn't I just do anything to help save her? And I really had to think. And the answer was no. Uh, what? I was not going to give in to her man emotional manipulation because she was incapable of making those decisions and I had to make those decisions for her. I was not going to let her tear apart my family and I was not going to let her tear apart me because I had to be strong for her. I had to have vision for her life when she had none, was incapable of having none. That was Montana state lawmaker Carrie Seekins Crow. I don't need to tell you, she's a Republican. And she's also the sponsor of a bill that would deny parents the right to seek gender-affirming care for their children. And yeah, you heard that right. Seekins Crow has a transgender daughter who struggled with depression and self-harm. But Seekins Crow didn't want to get her daughter help. Instead, she complained on the floor of the Montana House about how selfish her daughter's depression was. She calls it emotional manipulation and says her daughter wanted to tear the family apart. And most of all, Seekins Crow wants you to know that she's the real victim here. Now it takes a special kind of monster to say in public, for the record, that no, I don't actually unconditionally love my children. But this is where the Republican Party is, a party driven openly, loudly, and proudly by hate, fear, and a toxic blend of Christian nationalism and deep narcissism. And speaking of narcissism, prominent Santa Claus racial truther Megyn Kelly also has some thoughts to share on the trans community. If we don't find our voices and start speaking up against this nonsense, we can kiss every woman's face goodbye. We can kiss women's rights goodbye. We can kiss sororities goodbye. We can take off our tops and our underwear and do our yoga in front of perverted men who just want to get off watching us till the cows come home, stick your daughter in the sorority, let them at her. Find your voices, ladies and the men who support us. Otherwise, this is our future. I'm sorry, I'm done, I'm done. I don't wanna deal with at, at Tridelt, at Kappa Kappa Gamma, in the women's locker room. Does Megyn Kelly think she's still in college? Because it sounded like most of her concerns with transgender rights had to do with making sororities less safe. Because as we all know, Sororities have historically been the safest of safe spaces for young women. But Megyn Kelly did accidentally say something true. She doesn't even consider the actual rights at issue here. What upsets her is that if trans people have equal rights, they'll start showing up in her social spaces. She really opposes that integration, I think is the word. In one corner, we have Megyn Kelly portraying all transgender people as raging sex criminals in waiting. In the other, Carrie Seekins Crow, saying she'd rather see her daughter dead than receiving gender-affirming care. These are the people Democrats are trying to find a bipartisan solution with. Give me a break. And now Republicans aren't just trying to control transgender children. Also in Montana, Republicans are using the power of the state to kick a transgender lawmaker off the floor of the state house, all for doing her job and debating the state's anti-trans bill. As too many trans Americans already know, if your rights are negotiable, you aren't really a person at all. Montana lawmaker Zoe Zephyr broke no laws. She was engaged in peaceful, protected speech while doing her job as the constituents elected her to do. Republicans have banned her from the House floor not for her conduct, but for her beliefs. Here's more from Zoe. Last week, I spoke on the governor's amendments to Senate Bill 99, which banned gender-affirming care. This was a bill that was one of many targeting the LGBTQ community in Montana. This legislature has systematically attacked that community. We have seen bills targeting our art forms, our books, our history, and our health care. And I rose up 
in defense of my community that day, speaking to harms that these bills bring and that I have firsthand experience knowing about. You can hear Zephyr's voice shaking because she's delivering this speech to a room full of Republicans who believe her gender identity is a mental illness. They view her voice as a threat to their own agenda. And if they're willing to overthrow the democratic process to punish her, what else are they capable of? And when the speaker asks me to apologize what he is, uh, on behalf of decorum, what he is really asking me to do is be silent when my community is facing bills that get us killed. He is asking me to be complicit in this legislature's eradication of our community, and I refuse to do so. Republicans may be working overtime to strip the rights and basic humanity from transgender Americans, but they also do so against a wall of popular opposition. Not only has support for transgender rights grown every year, it's rising at a faster rate as Republicans embrace increasingly unhumane policies like what we see in Montana. Majorities of voters in nearly every state in the country support protecting trans rights. It's only by silencing those voices that Republicans win. Unfortunately, that's exactly what they're doing. Well, that was a journey. And if you want even more, check out this video. And remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.